So hello, everybody. Um, nice to uh, talk to you. It's a pity we, I can't be there in person, hopefully at the next meeting. So um, I'm going to talk today a little bit about PixApp. I think many of you are aware of it, so I don't want to go over all ground, um, but I'll just introduce it briefly. Um, but what I would really want to talk about is what we're doing to support companies and support researchers um, through PixApp and through some of our activities in, in photonic packaging to enable them to scale up to manufacturing. And that's really driven around design standards. So obviously um, you have to get into the lab and you have to do the work, but a lot of a lot of preparation of that, and we find actually in many projects in packaging, the actual packaging work is a very small portion of it. It's all the design, the standardization as much as you can, ensuring that the packages work within machines. All that planning is really, really important. So I just want to talk a little bit about that um, and then talk about some emerging church, uh, trends and challenges. So um, where, where, where things are going, because, for example, in PixApp, we have to be not just uh, financially uh, sustainable, we also have to be technologically sustainable. So we want to be bringing in new uh, technologies and developing those so we can offer them to the wider community. <clears throat> so um, just very briefly, maybe you've seen this already, but Tyndall, we have a number now of packaging labs. And this is, this is our original lab, and you can see different, different components for fiber, and micro optics, different types of electrical um, uh, integration systems as well. And um, what's happened in the last, uh, say, 18 months is um, Ficon Tech have set up a, a research R&D facility in, in our lab. So Ficon Tech Ireland basically is a, is a new entity. And the great thing there is that um, we're installing a number of machines uh, more focused on um, not just development, but how we automate and, and make sure the machines are designed for manufacturing. So it's not just machines, but also, for example, this is uh, Jose Para, who's a Ficon Tech engineer. So we've got some research people on site and, and it's a fantastic um, opportunity for us all to work together. So, um, you know, uh, this is actually this was this diagram is included in the uh, the road mapping uh, document that Stefan uh, spoke about uh, previously. So we were involved in this, and this is a this is a simple diagram we put together at the time. But I think the, the important point to know here is it's not just the breakdown of the different. It probably doesn't capture all the different types of packaging requirements. But when you do a package, when you're working on a package, you might think, well, I'm going to look at a way of optical packaging. But you must consider all the other aspects and. Really what's happening now we see is, for example, many projects where we need to look at laser integration um, or ORF design. So, you know, th there's conflicts across all of those. When you design a package for an optical solution, you come up with one design, um, but it might conflict with ORF. So how, where do you bring in ORF lines, which can be very, very challenging. So I think this, this diagram, really what I want to say is that there's a lot there and you need to consider all the different aspects um, and not just focus on, for example, optics, because people think of photonic packaging, it's just fiber optics or whatever. It's so much more than that. <clears throat> so in PixApp, um, we offer a menu. We've tried to really reduce it down and uh, make it very simple because a lot, of, a lot of companies we work with are not familiar even with integrated photonics. Quite often they're approaching it for the first time, never mind packaging. So we really simplified it down to a, to a menu. So you can see all the different features that we, we have we have available um, and uh, things like micro optics, fiber packaging, laser integration, flip chip of electronics, different types of interposers. Um, and a key feature of that is that we're able to offer those from a prototyping stage. So quite often we might have a company comes in and they ask us, well, we've just made our chip or we're just designing our chip. And ideally that's the situation we get involved in designing the chip. And I'll explain why that's important in a moment. But it's not going straight to production. Stefan talked about the NRE, the very large cost for, a, for example, a, a gold box type package from Kyocera. They can be up to 100,000 euros. It could be a lead time of maybe a year. Um, it depends on the complexity, but for an RF type package can be very, very expensive. We've designed these kind of prototype uh, platforms, which if you follow the, the layout of the chip design rules, um, it's possible to make these very, very quickly. Um, just so people are aware, we also do training, which is also integrated now with uh, Photon Hub Europe through the European Photonics Academy. And obviously we, we go out and promote what we do in terms of uh, exhibits and also uh, road mapping and uh, standardization activities. 
So I mentioned about standardized packaging, and that's really important because it's very complex. That, that organogram I showed a moment ago, um, where do you start? So we, we you know, originally document, you can see here in 2015, um, kind of on, in, in a PDF, if you will, give it out to people, um, design rules, and they're very basic. But in, in PixApp with Synopsys on board, um, we were able to kind of bring those into a software CAD tool. So using their Opto Designer software, and that's more automated. So if somebody's laying out a chip, you've got design rules which can be incorporated into the software. So for example, um, you're probably familiar if you go to a foundry, they have a PDK, a process design kit. So you've got different building blocks, like it might be a, an edge coupler or a grading coupler or some kind of a photo detector, photo diode or different types of components. Similarly, in the packaging world, you've got, we, we define called ADKs, assembly design kits. And this would be a particular layout on the PIG chip itself that's compatible with a packaging requirement. So for example, um, things like the arrays, so uh, fiber arrays, how you, how you lay out your waveguides to be compatible with fiber array, different types of uh, ribbon bonding for high frequency, laser integration. And if you bring those two components together, the, the, the foundry PDK and the packaging ADK, you can start to lay out your chip Obviously that it's compatible with the foundry making the device, but similarly, when you bring it to a packaging um, entity like PixApp, it's already configured such that we can actually package the component. So um, these reference chips that we developed in PixApp have been very, very useful for internal development. Essentially, they have all of those ADK layouts in them. So the spacings for the waveguides, the, the bond pad areas, et cetera. Um, and uh, we've used them for, for different types of development activities inside to standardize the, diff the, the different packaging processes across the different our partners around Europe. But also what they're becoming very useful for is where some of our partners and equipment companies, this is a very nice example, Ficon Tech uses, uses it for, for installing systems. So if you go to a, if you sell a machine to a company, and um, they, 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 they want to validate that. Now, quite often, some of the companies may, for different reasons, not have chips available. So these standardized packaging, or these layout, these reference chips, they can be utilized to validate a machine. They can be utilized to validate a process or validate an installation um, procedure. And an important point I want to mention here is, if I can take our partner, but we're, we work with people outside, uh, uh, partner and picks up, we work with companies outside and we've given these chips to other companies so they can validate processes. So it really speeds up that kind of, for example, a machine installation process. It's been so successful that we've collaborated with Amphitonics in the US and they've actually copied essentially what we're doing. We're working closely with them um, to develop the AIM reference chip. And that's got other features on it, like, for example, micro optics integration. And we're talking about laser integration. And what we're doing here is developing a critical mass. So from a global perspective, we can really start to slowly push standardization and uh, ensure that we've got com compatibility across different foundries so that when chips are made, because AIM are also a foundry provider, when chips are produced, they're com you know, they can be easily packaged. Um, one of the big limitations we have is that the number of chips, so quite often you might be involved in a project where you might have a handful of chips. Typically, companies are going to MPW runs where they maybe have 10, 50 chips. Really, for a lot of process development, you need hundreds, even thousands of chips. So what we've done in PixApp as well is we've made a number of chips. For example, this is true, our, one of our partners, LineX, um, and you can see the layout here, simple loopbacks. But these are very valuable um, for, for really looking at high volume automation testing. We've also, for example, made micro lenses with our partner SUS. So because that's something I'll talk about in a moment, where we're trying to standardize and develop uh, automated micro lens attached processes. So we need lots of chips. So um, that, that's something we're, we're really starting to do and give them out to the, to the community so people can start to use them internally as well. As I said, for things like machine installation, but for also process development. This concept has really gained a lot of traction, a lot of interest. So I mentioned about these reference chips for photonics. We're now also developing reference chips for EICs, electronic ICs. So we've got these simple designs where we, you know, we, we're making, for example, heating chips uh, to mimic the, the thermal aspect of a PIC, um, not necessarily the optical aspect, and also the RF characteristics. So things like simple loopbacks. So we can, when you package your device, it's not a real working chip, but it can test the package. It can look at its heat dissipation. It can look at its ability to deliver an RF signal through the package up onto these reference chip. So this kind of reference device is, be, is proving to be a really useful kind of tool. It's not, it's not a functional device per se, but it's a tool we can utilize. 
So when we build, when we have all these kind of capabilities, impacts picks up, we've made some demonstrators to show how when we put them all together, these ADKs and, and these packaging building blocks. So this is a simple example. And um, this is a data comms demonstrator using a silicon photonic uh, chip from, from IMEC. And you can see, for example, we've got hybrid laser integration, flip chip of electronic ICs, micro optics, um, and there's different types of interposers. So just very quickly, you can see here the assembled parts. Um, and uh, you can see, for example, the different ribbon wire bonds, again, following the ADKs, the flip chip integration, the laser integration, um, and micro optics for pluggable type connectors. The important thing is now our industrial partners have validated these processes and they're standardized so they can take them on and scale up to larger volumes. So it's developed within our research partners, it's standardized and the industrial partners can scale it up. So a trend that's becoming quite common now, and you've probably seen this, is the area of co-packaging. So what's happening more, for example, in data centers is one of the big kind of like uh, pioneering markets, let's call it for, for integrated photonics, is where the actual photonic and electronics are being integrated onto the package. Historically, the fiber was brought to the edge of the PCB and then it was electronic routing. But the actual, the, the fiber is going into the package. So for that, really, you want the photonic and the electronic chips are co-packaged within, within the same platform. And that's presenting great challenges, both in terms of integration, heat management, the complexity of the different kind of, kind of interconnects, both optical and electrical, that you must put in a very small form factor. So when you look at that kind of challenge, these are kind of some questions, and we see people asking these questions. For example, do you integrate the laser on top of, in the package, outside the package? Is it integrated onto the pick itself? So there's a lot of questions around that. The trend at the moment is that people are starting to move from outside, outside the package, bringing it in a fiber, to putting it in the package. And in the long term, it will be integrated heterogeneously onto the photonic chip. But there's a lot of challenges there. For example, heating of the laser onto the pick itself. Um, historically, fiber arrays were bonded onto the edge of the chip, but using micro lenses, as I'll show in a moment, it's possible to make pluggable connectors. Also, for example, the interposer. So the interposer is the electrical kind of interconnect that connects the photonic and the electronic ICs, and these are becoming extremely complex. For example, we're involved in a European project where we have over 3,000 different electrical transmission lines between the electronic ICs and the photonic chip. And um, some of those are RF. So you can imagine there's a lot of layers. There's about 20 layers in there. So it's a very complex design. So there's a lot of RF design in that as well. And obviously then with this high level of integration, heat sinking is a very important parameter that needs to be uh, considered as well. And it, generally it must be passive. So from an from a, a interposer, you've got different options like 2.5D or 3D stacking, for example. The problem with stacking is you're going to have heat dissipation down onto the photonic chip, whereas they're put side by side. Here you can see on the left side work we did with uh, Karen Bergman's group in Colombia, um, and these chips are from AIM Photonics. You can see the silicon interposer. Other types of interposers include glass um, and uh, ceramic materials as well. This is the example of this very high density interposer. And we're working with Kaiser in Japan to develop this, 20 levels, over 3,000 transmission lines, and a very narrow line within spacing, 40 microns. So again, um, you can see this trend for co-packaging, where you're integrating these photonic chips. Essentially, this interposer is not just doing the interconnection, but it's also an RDL, a redistribution layer. So the actual, the, the fine pitch is, is fanned out onto a PCB, which is below the actual interposer itself. So just looking at the trends in optical packaging, active alignment is generally quite fast. The limitation on, on processing speed is usually down to the loading and unloading of the parts. So putting them into the machine and taking the parts off the machine. The active alignment is generally quite quick. Uh, one of the big problems we see is that waveguide mode sizes vary. So typically from three to nine microns. Obviously we want to be closer to nine microns or 10 microns because that's more compatible with SMF fiber. Um, Flip chip is, is, is becoming more important, but it's, for example, in this particular case here, you see the package is inverted because of the, the silicon photonic devices flip chip down for high frequency access, but we need to see the waveguides. The camera needs to see it from the top, so the package is inverted. Um, also, look, uh, waveguide density, it's, it's, it, you know, need to, need to decrease, but there's a limit of 127. So looking at interposers to reduce the pitch. 
a very important trend is around the bonding materials. And this is a big, big challenge at the moment, bonding epoxies. Um, because when the packages are finished, typically they will go into an application where, for example, they might be reflowed onto a PCB. So the epoxies need to withstand that reflow temperature generally around 260. So typically most epoxies will not withstand that. So we've been working hard to find suitable epoxies with a high glass transition temperature. They are out there um, and they also present problems without gassing. Another important challenge that we're seeing, a lot of people are asking just to eliminate the, uh, the interposer on ceramic or more expensive uh, ceramic materials like aluminium nitride and go directly to the PCBs. The big issue there is quite often warpage. So the chips can actually warp especially if there's an underfill on the chip, if it's flip chipped. And for example, what we've seen is across, say, for example, a five millimeter pick, you can have maybe three to five micron warpage. And you can imagine in an array, that can be quite a problem if you're looking at, you know, a micron or less alignment tolerance. So warpage is a big, a big thing to be concerned about, especially as we're going to lower cost um, printed circuit boards. One of the last things I'll talk about is just micro optics. It's something we're starting to look at a lot of interest. So rather than bonding the fiber directly to the pick, you can directly bond a micro lens and we've developed a design rule to automate that process. So um, using a, what we call alignment waveguides, we can actually illuminate the edge uh, waveguides and the machine can pick up these waveguides and align the micro lens. But essentially what you're doing here is you're collimating and expanding the beam and uh, that enables then uh, a fiber array with a, with a micro lens basically to refocus that beam and couple it into the fiber. This is just a very simple uh, summary here of some modeling. So you can see, for example, with a micro lens attached, these typically in a 10 micron mold size, for example, in a, in a silicon nitride or a silicon photonic chip coming out of some of the foundries, it would be a few silica uh, micro lens array. <clears throat> and you can see the gap here by varying the actual beam waste, you can vary the gap for the coupling efficiency. By changing the beam waste as well, so the beam diameter, you can increase the, the, the alignment, kind of like relax the alignment tolerance in the spatial direction, but that then competes against the angular alignment tolerance. So there's this trade-off of having the width of the beam, the waist between the, uh, the, the spatial, the X and the Y, and the, um, the angular alignment tolerance. But that's something we're working on and there's a lot of interest because it eliminates the need to bond the fibers right to the edge. So you can see, for example, here, we're bonding few silica micro lenses to the edge of the pick um, and uh, you know, autom trying, to, trying to automate that process. So that's something we're doing with Ficontech. We developed the baseline process, Ficontech then start to develop the machine that could automate that process. So um, from a connector point of view, there's a lot of interesting developments, like for example, US Connect, have these outer plane couplers. This is, they've already developed this for surface uh, uh, grating couplers in silicon. We're working now to develop a process where we put my, um, um, uh, prisms so we can actually have outer plane coupling from edge coupled devices. And um, the last thing I'll say is around our a very exciting project we have now funded from the European Commission called Photonic Leap. And essentially what we're developing here is a wafer level surface mount package. And the, the, the value here is this enables us to, to, to develop multi-project wafer runs for packaging and we can scale up the volume. It's also compatible with wafer level test. Because it's a, surf, a, a ball grid array type package, we can probe electrically from the bottom and uh, we can test optically from the top. So this is a new project. We've got a number of partners. I should also say it's glass-based material and we're working with one of our partners, LPKF, a German-based manufacturer of glass interposers. Um, and the, the, the great opportunity here is it can go to wafer and even panel level processing. So just to summarize, um, packaging services for integrated photonics are now becoming available. We really need to kind of work towards more design standards. Optical integration challenges include things like higher fiber counts, pluggable connectors using micro optics, laser integration, and high TG epoxies for solid reflow compatible materials. As I said, micro optics are becoming important, not just for fiber based, but for free space like sensors and LIDAR. We're moving more towards wafer level packaging. So you'll start to see photonics packaging clean rooms, you know, moving from back end to, sorry, front end, so back end to front end. And also then looking at more automated design. So linking up the design sequences. So really, as I said, Design is an enormous part of our work. So um, that's it, and I'll open up the questions. Thanks, Peter.